Let's now have a look at where we need to do traffic engineering when we are connected to two internet exchange points. There are several variations possible on this theme. And so what we're trying to do here is give you general guidelines about what you need to think about. We could be peering at two local IXPs. Shouldn't really happen as an IXP is intended to be a collaborative effort between members and participants to peer local traffic. Two IXPs serving the same local market doubles the costs for all operators and makes the traffic engineering more challenging. It might be a case where we're peering at a local IXP and a regional IXP. This is very common, and this is where an ISP will participate in the local exchange point for local traffic and also turns up at one or more regional IXPs for greater peering opportunities. Or we could also have the case where we're peering at two regional IXPs, and this occurs in the absence of a local internet exchange point. The diagram shows a potential setup. We have the exchange point member sitting in AS100. Their router A connects to one exchange point, and their router B connects to the other exchange point. This could also be the case where one exchange point operates two independent sites. For scaling IXs, once we get beyond the case of needing two Ethernet switches, members usually request that the IX sets up two independent physical locations. We don't want to join those two IX switches together in the two separate locations, but we run the two locations completely independently. The second exchange point line configuration will be set up in the same way as the, as the connection to the first IXP. The member has access to the same facilities. They will probably run a route server, they will probably offer IX services, and so on. Setting up BGP is straightforward. We establish eBGP sessions with the IXP route server, with the other IXP members, and with the IXP services infrastructure. Traffic engineering can be done by load balancing across the IXP links needed when members are present at both IXPs. For outbound traffic and engineering, by default, the link chosen will follow BGP best path rules. In the absence of any other member policy, for example, meds or communities, best path will be lowest neighbor IP address, which most likely means that the link to one IXP carries all the traffic and the link to the other IXP remains relatively empty. And we could end up with a situation with outbound traffic going through one IXP and return traffic coming through the other IXP, especially if some of the other members follow the same default behaviors. AS100 could load balance over the two IXPs by setting local preferences on particular announcements from peers, or using any BGP community policy implemented by other members. Inbound traffic engineering, by default, again, will follow BGP best path rules. In the absence of any local policy, the best path will be the lowest neighbor IP address. And this becomes entirely dependent on the address block the IX has received from the regional internet registry. AS100 could load balance over the two IXP links to other members. They could do this by setting meds on particular announcements to peers. Half the peers could have announcements of med 10 on one link and med 20 on the other link to the other IX. Another half of the peers have made values reversed. And again, this assumes that the peers will respect the meds which are being sent. Or we could implement a BGP community policy, which is available for other members to use. And again, as we saw earlier, IXPs quite often recommend what this community policy might be. We could use ASPath prepends, as we have seen earlier, with the same caveat. We need to be sure that the IX path is not longer than via the paid transit links. What about now if one of the IXs is a regional exchange point? If you remember back to the peering preferences excerpt, you remember you would want to prioritize the local IXP over the regional IXP. So the regional IXP land configuration would be set up in exactly the same way as the local IXP providing the same facilities, the route server, the IX services, and so forth. 
BGP configuration will be established in the same way with a route server, with the other members, and with the services infrastructure. And traffic engineering will be done in the same way as well, load balancing if needed, especially when members are present at both the local and the regional IXP. Fidebound traffic engineering, again, the default will be that we follow BGP best path rules. Here, setting local preference on BGP routes learned from different classes of neighbors becomes very important. We saw the local preferences set before. If a member you're appearing with appears at both the local IX and the regional IX, we would want to send traffic between us and them over the local exchange point, not the regional exchange point, which probably has greater cost for us to reach in terms of physical infrastructure, fiber optics, and so on. Inbound traffic engineering configuration, again, by default, will follow BGP best path rules. In the absence of any policy, it again it could well be by neighbor IP address. And again, that means dependent on the address block the exchange point has received from the registry. As with the outbound example, AS100 will need to prioritize incoming traffic over the local IX rather than the regional IX. For members who are participating in both exchanges, we want to consider the regional as the backup. Outbound traffic follows the local preference table in earlier slides, and we will probably need to use ASPath prepend or communities or subdividing address blocks to try and ensure that the return traffic comes back over the local IX and not over the regional. We won't want outbound traffic to go over the local IX and the return from the member to come over the regional IX. The third subcase we're looking at is the peering at two regional exchange points. And this one could also apply where the IXP operates two independent sites. As we saw earlier in this excerpt, the second IXP LAN configuration will be set up in the same way as the first one. Members access the same facilities, the route server, exchange point services, and so forth. BGP configuration with the same infrastructure as we discussed before and the traffic engineering needs to be considered as well. But now we need to consider which regional IX we want to give preference to, especially, again, if members are present at both of them. Because by default, the link chosen will follow BGP best path rules. Especially if we're going between continents, one regional IX might be a lot closer, millisecond round trip time, than the other one. So we don't really want to have outbound traffic going through an IX, a regional IX in one continent, and returning through the regional IX in another continent. We could quite potentially end up with traffic going all the way around the globe in the worst cases. And that's really very suboptimal. So AS100 could load balance over the IXs by setting local code preferences on particular announcements from peers paying close attention to geographical or regional interconnect issues, and by using any BGP community policy implemented by other members. In fact, in cases like this, the use of BGP communities becomes even more and more important to ensure that we can have a symmetric traffic flow as possible. For more about BGP community configuration, refer to the BGP community slide sets. Inbound traffic engineering, again by default, will follow BGP best path rules. AS100 will need to prioritize incoming traffic between the two regional IXPs according to geographical needs or other issues that come up. Outbound traffic will follow the local preference table we discussed earlier. Prioritization can be done using AS path prepend. Again, we need to use this carefully. Subdividing address blocks. So deaggregating for private peer and regional connections and not subdividing for a transit.